Kansas City Chiefs, they have two first-round picks in the 2022 NFL Draft. Obviously, for them, Wheeling and Dillon making these big-time moves here. Let's start off with round one, pick number 29 here. Obviously, they traded away Tyreek Hill was one of the biggest weapons, probably in Kansas City Chiefs franchise history, one of the most impactful players for them from an explosive production standpoint. You have them taking Jamison Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama, who has a lot of potential and a lot of opportunity to make some noise. But coming off of ACL, might be a redshirt year for him. But he was anticipated to be running by the time the draft starts, which, you know, I'll share my thoughts on that afterwards. Jamison Williams to the Chiefs, one of the most popular matches since they traded Tyreek Hill. Me personally, I'm partial to getting Calvin Austin around two, but you know, that's just a personal preference. I really like Jamison Williams. He's my second overall receiver behind Garrett Wilson. Even with the injury, man, this guy is one of the best players in the draft and it all, you know, revolves around his speed. This guy, you know, it's not just regular speed. This is long strider speed. This is a guy who's 6'2", covers ground with ruthless efficiency. You know, he's a he destroys tackling angles. Once he gets in open space, it's almost impossible to keep up with this guy. Explosive, you know, dynamic, deep threat. But at the same time, you know, you look at him outside of the speed and he's got some of the tools to be a complete wide receiver. The hip sync on his routes, he can he can chop his feet and stop very suddenly on those in-breaking routes. And then he's got ball tracking ability. He can contort, he can track the ball in the air and control his body. You know, his hands can be a little more consistent, especially against contact. But if you're looking for a dynamic speed threat to replace Tyree Kill, Jameson Williams in round one, you know, even with the injury, it looks like he's on pace to make a full recovery. Uh, we saw the other day he was doing those those hops on the sideline. He looks like he's getting better. He's on track to be running uh, at some point later this offseason. So it's trending in the right direction. And when he's healthy, he is just an insane talent. One thing I was going to mention there, too, is like for me, I, I've torn my ACL. And, and one thing I know about ACLs, look, I think everyone's so enamored by Cam Akers' quick recovery from an Achilles injury. Yeah. But for an ACL, what happens is when you have a donor tissue, whether it even comes from your own patella tendon, your own hamstring, or it's a cadaver, your body, after you go through the reconstructive surgery, go through the operation, they insert it, it takes 12 weeks for your body to either accept or reject the own tissue that's been there. Even your own tissue can be rejected, which is very, very odd here. Now, I imagine he probably had a patella tendon because those tend to hold up the strongest. But for him to run this early, like, he has nothing to prove, I think, to anybody. Like if, if the Chiefs take him at pick number 29, I think it's highly justified. Even if you don't get to see him maybe this year or maybe if he's ready by the postseason, you can get the introduction there. But he's a damn good player. And man, I tell you what, he'd fit great inside that offense but yeah. tom now let's get and, to pick and number whispers, 30 whispers are too that um you might not even be able to get him at 29 you know he's so talented Ooh, maybe teams yeah. trade up to get him anyway because when he's healthy i mean again game breaking talent i mean prior to the acl injury he was looking like possibly being the number one receiver off the board oh yeah i don't think like, you're like i said i've said this several times like you're not drafting the player they are today you're drafting the player you project them to be down the road and if you think that james williams especially if you take him in the first round and you get that fifth year option like he is going to be a dynamic player for years and years in the NFL if we think he's going to be and translate the way we think he will. So I would not be surprised if he's not available at 21 at 29. It's just the one that I think it's Chiefs fans kind of dream of that one being the case because he kind of makes that perfect fit to fill in for that Tyreek Hill kind of role. But moving on to the next draft, it doesn't take long because the Chiefs are actually back up on back-to-back -back picks thanks to the trades they pulled off with the Miami Dolphins sending off Tyreek Hill. But in this one, you have them bring in a little bit of pass rushing help, most likely because right now they just still have Melvin Ingram's kind of sitting out there on board. We don't know if he's going to come back yet, but you have Boy Mafa, the edge rusher out of Minnesota. Very movable kind of guy. What makes you think this is going to be such a nice fit here in, in uh, Kansas City? Yeah, I think you made a great transition talking about Williams. You know, we're not projecting what they are right now. We're projecting what they yep. can be. And that is literally the that's the modus operandi for a guy like Boye Mafe. I mean, this is a guy who you're projecting what he can be and what he can be is a double digit sack uh, pass rusher. You know, that's what he can be at his max projection. I mean, this is a guy who has all the athletic tools. I mean, you look at what he measured in at the combine, I think six, three, three, four, 261 pounds, arms over 33 inches, you know, and he's he's putting up numbers that are insane i mean four five three 40 yard dash 38 inch vertical 125 inch broad and looked and, good in the drills yeah he looked very good in the drills and again going back to the senior bowl too i mean that was a week where he trended up the entire week he was very hard to handle uh in the practices and then he had a dominant showing in the game just absolutely dominant no one could stop this guy how could no one stop him? you ask well he's explosive he's got bend 
He's able to win around the apex with hand moves. Here's the thing. He's still very young in his football career. He came over. He was in boarding school from Nigeria. A very incredible story and an incredible young man, too. You listen to him talk in press conferences. You can tell that he understands the process oriented, you know, approach that pass rushers need to have. He understands situational awareness with his hands. He's still trending up. You know, the caveat there is that he's going to be an older rookie because he came over. You know, he's going to be 24 mm -hmm. years old as a rookie, but, you know, he's trending up. He's starting to get into that peak already where he's maximizing his tools and that's the guy that I want in my edge room and looking at the Chiefs they tend to like bigger guys and Boye Mate is bigger he's he's got a dense frame and he's also super athletic so I love this as a high upside pick where you know two to three years down the line he could be one of your best players well let's get to round two pick number 50 here kind of going back to back edge rushers here they have them selecting Cameron Thomas edge rusher out of San Diego State now I think Chiefs fans for the most part will be curious as to why are they double dipping at edge rusher well I think that there's obviously flexibility for the future but then again you can allow Chris Jones to kind of sit on that defensive interior and stay there I mean one thing when Melvin Ingram was brought into the the organization in 2021 they're able to bump him from the edge to the inside where he's a real stakeholder there for that defense so now you get two legitimate pass rushers that can just rotate and grow and it's not about like i love what you said earlier it's not about who they are right now it's about who you think they can become getting two edge rushers back to back double dipping would be a smart strategy in my opinion yeah, and Cameron Thomas, another guy who has that bigger frame, with, which the Chiefs love. I think he measured in around 6'4", 267 at the NFL Combine, but he was up around the 270s at times in, in college, you know? So he's a guy, especially at San Diego State, again, you know, it's a solid football program, but there were times when he was one of their bigger defensive linemen, so they rotated him in, inside to three-tech at times, you know, and he still performed pretty well there. So he's a guy, maybe pack on a few pounds and have him be a versatile, you know, lineman, you know, shifting out to five-tech or three-tech, you know, there is flexibility there. And I think looking at, at it from an NFL team perspective, you can never have enough pass rushers. And Cameron Thomas doesn't have the athleticism that Boye Mafe has. I know my guy Ali is a big fan of Cam Thomas, though, for one reason. He calls him Baby Grok because this guy has the thick frame. You know, he's powerful and he can win around the edge. He's got some surprising ankle flexion for his size. So this is a guy I think can be a very good utility guy in your rotation. And maybe a couple years down the line, you know, can be a very flexible piece. Yeah, I mean, talk about guys who need to put on some weight. I don't think the next guy coming up here with a second pick for the Kansas Chiefs and Instagram needs to put on more weight. And that is full Darian Mathis, defensive tackle Alabama. Here we are again, once again, reassuring those trenches on the defensive side of the ball. You got two edge rushers. Now you bring a defensive tackle here in the second round. Do you like him more? Like I said, I was talking like, oh, like a zero tech, one tech. Do you think it'd be a three? How do you think he's going to fit more on the Kansas City Chiefs defense? Yeah, I think I wouldn't trust him two gapping right away. Uh, I, I like him in that role, but, you know, he's, he struggled to maintain that anchor at times for me, you know, and he can play that role for sure. I would probably have him at three or two, you know, maybe two I, you know, yep. again, move him around in that two to three range. Uh, but I do think, you know, he can go out to four as well, not at five. He's not quite athletic enough for that. But the thing with Fedarian Mathis, you know what you're getting. And that's 100% motor on every snap. This guy plays with a ton of energy. He's got long arms and powerful extensions. And he's got violent hands, too. I mean, I love the hand usage, the energy that he carries with each rep. Again, you know, I, the, the anchor. And I do think he has the strength to eventually become a good zero tech, you know, in time. But he, you know, I think the leverage, the balance issues were part of what kept him from holding his anchor at times in the center. You know, it's one of those things where you got to be really strong, not just strong, but fundamentally sound too. And you got to, you know, lower your pads and keep that center of gravity. And he's not quite where he needs to be with that yet. But again, you know, violent hands, energy, alignment, versatile. This is what you're getting with Federian Mathis. So at the tail end of round two, maybe round three, if he lasts that long, you know, it's tough to get a handle on where these interior defensive linemen are going to go. But he's a coach's guy. You know, he's got the high motor, he's a leader, and he's versatile. So I think for the Chiefs especially, you know, he's the guy who can free your interior lineup a little bit. Makes a ton of sense. And honestly, the Kansas City Chiefs have a ton of picks in this year's draft, including two more third-round picks. We'll kind of run through the rest of these here at pick 94. You have Cam Tyler Britt, the cornerback of Nebraska. Definitely going to need more cornerback help in this division with how pass-heavy it's going to be. At 103, they can grab Nick Cross, the safety out of Maryland. Hope we kind of bridge that gap that might be lost when they lose Tyler Ma uh, Tyron Matthew. Uh, coming here in pick four, Tyquan Thornton, a wide receiver out of Baylor, a big speed guy who really showed out at the NFL Combine. Then we have a little bit of a gap, but they have four seventh round picks. Ty Chandler, running back out of North Carolina, who you guys know me. I have been very high on Ty Chandler. Love this pick for him. DeMarco Johnson, linebacker out of Appalachian State. As a Michigan fan, I hate saying the word Appalachian State every single year. Then they get two more picks here to Kobe Durant, cornerback out of South Carolina State, and finish that with Deshaun Dixon, the edge rusher out of Norfolk State at pick. 260. A lot of valuable picks there for Chiefs Kingdom. And if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, let us know what you think about these mock draft selections courtesy of Pro Football Network.